Hello, and welcome to the Bordeaux Show. I am Bordeaux, and this is Marigala Fortress. The castle overlooks the city of Tbilisi, the capital of Georgia, and with whom I wish to tie the tale of mail with. I've brought you all here to discuss what else but chain mail, or mail as it's professionally known. History of mail goes way back into the fogs of time. Modern historians presume it to originate from the Celts, adopted by the Romans and then by the rest of the world. But one of the last battles in mail took place right here. Mail was one of the most popular styles of armor, and with its features of flexibility and ultimate pr protection from slashing damages, it's a force to be reckoned with. Combination of flexibility, relative universal standard of use, and greater ability to fit different bodies, thus making it easier to mass produce and fit your army. But still, it wasn't cheap and only the wealthiest of warriors could afford it. But, looting it was always free. Wandering around the fortress, I came across a fellow history enthusiast and scholar, Michael Shavlashvili. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, can you tell us about the history of this fortress? Of course. This is the fortress of Narigala, the main citadel of the old Tbilisi, which was built in the 4th century AD, as they say. As I've said, uh, mail was thought to be invented by the Celts and popularized in the Roman Empire and through Rome. Yeah, it went passing through the Caucasian region, territory first known as the Persian Empire. Yes. And uh, it got influenced by the Oriental motifs and then passed through the Eastern region. Yes. Returned into with more Eastern flair into the Caucasus once more and, and stayed better here. Quality. Yeah, better quality and stayed here until the 20th and the 21st centuries. As the battles between East and West raged on these lands, so has the influence has been fused and buried here too. As for the symbol of this history, I chose the Narihala Fortress. Due to its long and bloody history, it has been rebuilt a lot of times. It has been held in the hands of the different conquerors as well as, as in the hands of the fellow Georgians. Until the Russian imperial times when the fortress was sadly blown up. According to the legend, lightning struck, the hand of God interfered, it, uh, rather it was destroyed than in the hands of Russians. Or as I think, as, and as it usually happens, some drunk Russian was smoking inside the gunpowder warehouse. That is also plausible. Georgia was stuck in the middle of Europe and Asia and became the battleground between Roman and Byzantine and Persian empires. As the battleground of empires, Georgia had to adopt the best militaristic technology the world had to offer as soon as possible. We were constantly besieged from the west, east, south and north as we held the position where the worlds met. Every Eurasian empire had vested interests in control in this region, thus we constantly had to be ready for war. And weapons and armor became part of our identity. And even mail, meant for the wealthiest of warriors, was commonplace in these mountains. One of my favorite features being mail face coverings Helsur and other Highlander Georgians and other Caucasians had. It surely gives you a striking look. All right now, let's go down to the city and find where we can get equipped as real Georgian warriors. From Lorica Hamata to more Eastern Bertha influenced male, Georgia has seen it all. Many used to believe that Georgian male came from the Persian, but modern archaeology disproves that. So does the origins of the castle might be older than we thought. The hill holds its complicated history on its shoulders. 
the mail armor was for a long time said to come to Georgia from the east. However, in the f we have the archaeological studies and findings that the mail armor here existed in the first century. And let's not forget that archaeology can change the course of the written history pretty well. Here we are at the old bathhouse district to meet up with my friend David Nasaridze. Hello, Mr. Hello. David. Hello, uh, welcome to my uh, Georgian military museum. David has a vast private collection of any history enthusiasts would love to see. From war miniatures of many different historical armies. Yes, and this is Caucasians. Miniatures. Yes, miniatures. This is Caucasians, a high quality. To arms and armor from Georgia's past, either authentic originals or quality recreations. Now I want to dress as a true Georgian knight. This is Chokha, Chokha as you are known as yes. your nickname is also nickname Chokha. Chokha because I walk every day in this area. Yes. It's a stunning woolen coat with its many different regional variations. But most famous feature must be the Masrebi, a form of small bandoliers first carried on the chest, then integrated into Chokha design that holds papal rifle charges. Uh, this was paper, and uh, here was black uh, compound. Black you need yes. to open by teeth and push here, yes. and then you shoot. Who don't have teeth, don't go in army. Yes. So you need it uh, for gunpowder. This yes. is like for... You need teeth for war. Yeah. <laughs> During the Russian imperial invasion of Caucasus, they came upon Circassians and did what they are best known for appropriated someone else's culture. Derek and Kuban Cossacks appropriating Chokha in their military wear, becoming part of Russian imperial horsemen attire, all of it being produced in Tbilisi and other Caucasian regions still. Like the rest of the world abandoned yes. mail and armor when guns came around, but we kept the tradition going. Yes. Because uh, in our mountain people used uh, only little shields. Yes, little bucklers, bucklers as it's known. And uh, strange uh, swords. Yes, bucklers as sabers. Yes. As you know, sabers are slashing weapons, and uh, mail is perfect like for this. slashing weapons. But we have perfect yeah. weapon against slashing weapons. Yes. It is Khanjali, G uh, Georgian and ca Caucasian. Uh, mainstay and of course world popular yeah. mace. Yes, and we have Georgian uh, circles for uh, protect yourself. This Hospitality, uh, yes. because we, when you go like guest, you use it if they uh, yes. attack you. These are Georgian knuckles, basically yes, yes. slashing uh, and bludgeoning weapons. Uh, and uh, of course, Satiteni, we named yes. it Satiteni. Oh, fingers, uh, Titi means fingers and uh, uh, Anjali you have. Because we don't use bayonets, we used uh, Anjali. Anjali is made, uh, you can see a, a pointy end to it. Shashas don't have a point, pointy yes. end as you yes. can see. Mm -hmm. This is for slashing yes. and this is for piercing specifically yes. male. As you can see, it can go through quite deep. And careful, uh, careful. Yeah. <laughs> so the traditional Caucasian equipment of this period you find mail with chokham, small shield, saber like shashka or other, a khanjali short sword, maybe even satiteni for fisticuffs. In the new dawning age of gun-led warfare, after a few shots, battles reverted into bayonets and sabers. So having a mail wasn't as bad of an idea. But we have very old history, so we yes. have Bronze Age to... Yes, uh, this is Satevari, ancient yeah. form of Anjali. As you can see, uh, we Georgians have been carrying a dagger yeah. uh, or a short sword with us throughout all of our history, yeah. from Bronze Age to sto yeah. from Stone Age to Bronze Age, and in, in the modern age, but unfortunately, uh, modern politicians do not understand the spirit of Georgians yes. and uh, are fighting against our history and our culture.
From here we go and visit the bathhouses that started it all. We found the scribe writings that on this place there was a town called Tepilis before the first century, in the first, second century AD. As part of the merchant uh, trade network that went through Mkwar or Ukura river. Yes, and later archaeological studies, which we will show you, found the proof for it. And let's not forget that if there is a town, there must be a citadel. On top of a hill, prefer. Where we are probably standing, and maybe later excavations will find it too. As we've already mentioned, the mail which was born in Celtic tribes, yes. it went a big parts of the Roman Empire, and we all have a stereotype that Romans wear these plates yeah. over their shoulders. And they, segmenta, yes, huh? and that's their armor type, and it's a Hollywood stereotype. Yeah. This armor was common in the first century, second century, like this. And then Romans, due to the big part of the German soldier of the Vandal religions, slightly came over, came to the chambers. Yes. In Georgia, as we found out, the uh, first male was introduced in the classical Roman principal yes. times in the first century AD, according to the archaeological yes. excavations. And here we can see a Roman type of bath. We are here with the uh, archaeologist Iraqi uh, Anjapadze who will tell us a bit about the history of this place. I, uh, so now I want to introduce you the oldest remains of old death uh, bathhouse in our capital city, Tbilisi. Uh, you should know that we have about uh, 30, 35 Roman type bathhouses in whole Georgia. One of them we have here. At this moment we have here pools, water pools. So called caldarium, tapidarium, frigidarium, it means pool for hot water, part for cold water, for cool water, warm and so on. So it's very important discovery for our country. And Especially for our city. Our city. Why? Why? What does uh, what I mean? Uh, so uh, it means that the city, as a uh, as a city, existed in third century. Also. So yes. it was not found in fifth century. It became the capital. Yes, actually, but it is yes, much longer history. Yes, uh, it, it became be capital in fifth century. But as a city, it existed early. The popular myth of founding of Tbilisi tells the tale of King Vakhtang Gorgasal, the wolf's head, who while hunting in the haunted forest, his falcon chased a pheasant, both falling into the boiling sulfur pools here. Thus, he built a city and moved the capital here, calling it Warm City Tbilisi. Famously, King Vakhtang was killed by a shot through the arm with a poison arrow, where he, like me, had his male armor open. Yes, we have a Roman map. You mean, I know, you mean the map? It's a Castorius map. Yes. Yeah, it's a 4th century map. But copy, the copy of this map, we can see in the Western Europe Museum, the 13th century copy. From the boiling mass of Tbilisi's foundation, let's go to a famous battle site where Presumably the last great battle in male took place in. Ah, uh, Bordo, by the way, did you know that this thing I'm wearing, the Nabadi, the woolen big coat, was also used as an armor? Yes, the padded woolen armor you know, stopped early styles of bullets in the tracks and that's why even Russian Empire adopted it. Yes, and nowadays it's considered to be a clothing of the shepherds. We are here at it's an easy battleground, one of the last battles that took place in male armor. Iran, led by Agha Mahmad Khan, laid siege to Tbilisi for alignment with the Russian Empire. Our king Heraclius miscalculated and trusted Russians to aid him, and without any support, lost this battle and the city was razed to the ground. What can you tell us about it? Oh, about the battle? Yes. 
Um, the battle itself sadly ended not quite well for the Georgian side. Uh, Persian armies won the won the battle and took over Tbilisi and burned it down. Yes, so sadly, many, many people. Sadly, a lot of ancient Tbilisi buildings didn't last till our age because of this. But this is place for battle, but we win we, 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 in 9 and 8, yes. 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 and uh, in 11, so yes. we lost we uh, lost battle. Yes, uh, uh, one thing to mention is that uh, famous warriors of Aragui. Famous 300 heroes of Aragui sacrifice their lives, give the king a chance to retreat and not die in vain. And the reason many of us say we lost this battle because we, our king, trusted that the Russians, those, those them Russians, would come and help us because the side they uh, tracted in uh, the defense of Georgia. Uh, actually, yeah. even before the tractor, Heraclius had a truce with the uh, Russian general Totlubo, yes. Totl Totl that they would fight against the fallen enemy together. And uh, Totleben didn't show up. Yes. Totleben didn't show up. Uh, Russians didn't show up. Some even Georgians didn't show up. And unfortunately, uh, uh, fighting a massive army, massive Persian army, we must. This time, Kenos was found in the church. Yeah, uh, this is replicas. Uh, Unfortunately, the king had many cannons, no but he didn't <laughs> have cannoneers. So finally, cannoneers, we have arrived. A bit late. Yes, a bit late. Two hundred years, a bit late. Yep. It is the end of the 18th, 18th century. But yes. Georgian army fought with the mayor. Yes. After this battle, influence of mail and other metal armor in the lowlands of Caucasus slowly disappears. Yes, however, in the highlands of Caucasus, both in Georgia and in the northern regions, chainmail armor is still a thing and they wear it in the uprisings against the Russian Empire and sadly in the battles each among other throughout the whole 19th century and even later. Yes, later when Soviet Union came, many uh, Caucasian tribes uh, tried to resist uh, in mail armor, but Communism uh, era of Soviet Union put an end to such beautiful a, art. Yes, ancient tradition. And uh, here we are now in the 21st century, a few people who try to keep the tradition going and revive it. Even. Yes. Revive it, reconstruct it, and keep it going. My goal today was also to make a recreation of one of my favorite pictures of old Georgian Highlander in glorious arms and armor. And with the help of Georgian Military Museum, I did my best, and I hope I accomplished it. Victoria Lee.